when we deal with things that are from the matters of the unseen, it's very, very important that we restrict ourselves to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because we have no other means of knowing what is going to come, of knowing the matters of the unseen, of knowing the prophecies of the day of judgment, of knowing what's going to happen in the grave, of knowing what's going to happen on the day of judgment, of knowing what paradise and hellfire are going to be like, we have no way of doing that without taking it from the book of Allah and from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Masih al-Dajjal, may Allah save me and save you all from the fitna of the Masih al-Dajjal. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has told us about it and it is from the things which are from the unseen. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed the reality of the Dajjal and what will happen with the Masih al-Dajjal to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who informed us about it. And so it is from the matters which are considered to be the matters of the unseen. And that's why when people talk about the Dajjal, you see so many people adding and embellishing the story from their own selves. They have things to add, they, have, they want to, you know, because it sounds so good and it gets everyone emotional and it gets, but at the end of the day, there's no good in it. Dajjal, as I mentioned, has been interpreted within the existing circumstances where countries, systems have been identified as Dajjal. However, when we listen to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam speak about Dajjal it will be very clear to us that what we're hearing on the YouTube the lectures about Dajjal for the most part are incorrect Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave us a very clear description of Dajjal, of his times, of the trials that the world would face, right up to his death. The whole picture, crystal clear. The Prophet wasallam said, O oh my people, there has been no fitna on the face of this earth, no trial on the face of this earth, since Allah Azza wa Jal created the children of Adam, the offspring of Adam, there has been no trial on this earth and there will be no trial on this earth until the day of judgment that is greater than the trial of the Masih al-Dajjal. Nobody will escape what is before it except that he will escape it. Meaning if you can be successful now, if you can escape the fitan that come before the Dajjal, the trials that come before the Dajjal, the other signs of the hour that happen and you can escape them and you can be safe from them, then bi-idhnillahi ta'ala you will be safe from the fitan of the Masih al-Dajjal. Each prophet taught more to his ummah about the Dajjal as the time became nearer. And the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us so much about the Dajjal we can have no doubt about who he is and where he's going to come from. He will begin by saying, I am a prophet when there is no prophet after me. And you must remember this because when the Dajjal will confuse the people and he will bring the dead to life by the permission of Allah and he will bring your own dead parents to stand in front of you to tell them he is Allah, you must remember these things. You must start by remembering that there is no prophet after the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Nobody. And then, the second time he will say, I am your Lord, but you will not see your Lord until you die. And this is the second point that you must remember, that you cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. You will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you die. And bi idnillah, you will see that in a way that will be a blessing for you in Jannat al firdaus al-A'la. The Prophet sallallahu he described him as being blind in the right eye. He has both a right eye and a left eye. 
He sees through the left and he is blind in the right. It must not be hidden from you that your Lord is not blind in one eye. This is again the third point. There is no prophet after the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You will not see Allah Azza wa Jal until you die and your Lord is not one-eyed. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to repeat this until the Sahaba thought he would not stop. He would say, your Lord is not one-eyed. Remember, your Lord is not one-eyed. Your Lord is not one-eyed. Your Lord is not one-eyed. Again and again and again. Because again, the trial of the Dajjal will be severe and it will shake a person to their very core. You need to remember there is no prophet after the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You will not see your Lord until you die and your Lord is not A'war. He is not one-eyed. He is a man with curly hair, thick twisted hair. Thick twisted curly hair. Between his two eyes is written Kafir or is written Kafara. So either it is written Kaf, Fa, Ra, or it is written kafir, disbeliever. Everyone who will dislike him will read it. And in another narration, every believer will read it or every Muslim will read something like this. The Prophet ﷺ also told us, the hour will not arrive until about 30 lying Dajjals appear, each claiming that he is a messenger of Allah. So that is the lesser Dajjals. Dajjal means deceiver. Comes from Dajjala which means to deceive. He's the deceiver. But Al-Masih al-Dajjal, this is the great deceiver, the ultimate. From his trials is that he will have with him the heaven and hell. He will have with him Jannah and Nar. Imagine someone brings Jannah to you in front of your face. He brings Jannah to you in front of your face. And he brings the hellfire to you in front of your face. Or he brings a cool river to you. And he brings a burning fire to you. A mountain of bread and resemblance of the heaven and hellfire will come with him. So it's not real Jannah. Nothing with the Dajjal is real. It's not the real Jannah that he brings. But what he brings is an image, a fake, so that you would look at it and think that it was Jannah. And you will, you will reach out, this is your Jannah, this is Allah, he's brought Jannah for you. And he's brought the hellfire for you. But it's not your Lord, it's not Allah Azza wa Jal. It is the Dajjal, the biggest liar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put on this earth. And so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, his hell is heaven and his heaven is hell. On December 6th, President Trump's words shook the world. He recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. The Temple Mount is the site of the first and second Jewish temples. But for hundreds of years, it's been occupied by Muslim shrines. The Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Golden Dome of the Rock now sit on the site. But some Jewish people want to build a third Jewish temple. The, 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 the great... Uh, uh temple being built in Israel. Do you ever, do you believe that at all? I'm, I didn't ask you well, ahead of time, so maybe. Well, yeah, I mean, certainly, and there's a push for that. And did you notice that one of the very first things when Trump was elected, the, uh, the rabbis in Israel calling on him and Putin to use their international clout to do what? To rebuild the temple. Don't think this can't happen. I think impetus is on our side right now. I think we're moving towards a moment. And the rabbis over there, some of what the mystical rabbis are saying is very very curious right now Trump upset victory divinely sent to begin messianic pro uh, process say Israeli rabbis oddly enough Trump goes to Israel in 2012 decides not to run for US president 
meets with heads of states, comes out of that, you can watch the, the YouTube on, on television, and he starts talking to the Jewish people, telling them to vote for Benjamin Netanyahu and the Likud party, which they did, right? אז לא הייתה שם משהו עם המים דעתו. ועושים, עושים. הכנראה שהיא מספיק, כאילו שהיום כבר שוד חם או שוד בגיל ועדיין ליבו. אבל יש עוד כמה שוד, שעות, אבל יש משתדלים גם היום. נכון. בצד הטובות. זה שמחה וטוב ליבו. רק כדי שחסידים מתחילים של כל מיני מנהיגים יותר שמחה. They're looking for a king. They're looking for a political leader. As a matter of fact, Messiah to them means the anointed one, and it goes back to the ancient days when they would anoint a king and recognize him as this is the man that God sent. They too believe that the Messiah is about to appear. We would say the second coming is about to happen, but their Messiah is going to be a false Messiah. He's going to be the Antichrist, right?